The uncertainty principle is first studied in school, then you continue studying it in the institute, and really everywhere there's particle physics, you'll definitely come across Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The principle is actually quite straightforward, and it states the following. The more precisely we measure one parameter of a quantum particle, the less accurately we can measure another parameter. Generally, this applies to momentum, velocity, position, or energy. This pair often arises comparing a particle's velocity and position. If we measure position precisely, velocity can't be measured accurately, and vice versa. The principle states that the more precisely we measure one, the less accurately we can measure the other. Typically, speed and position are compared. If position is measured accurately, velocity can't be, and vice versa. This principle states that defining one parameter precisely means another is less accurate. In reality, it's perceived differently. This is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle as written in textbooks and remembered well. Heisenberg's principle is now known, but was unclear initially. This is something that is written in the textbook and that everyone remembers well, but at the time it was formulated, when Heisenberg came up with, let's say, this rule, or discovered, or formulated it, there wasn't such a clear awareness and understanding of this principle. Moreover, the wave-particle duality, at that time only, let's say, it puzzled the scientific community. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is often met with skepticism. Some uncertainties dependent on probability were perceived, well, let's say, with some mistrust. Heisenberg's principle shows we can't measure two parameters precisely, revealing a particle's dual nature, wave and position. And in general, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle connects us not just to the fact that we can't precisely determine two parameters at the same time, but it ties us to the idea that a particle has two natures at once. This includes the wave nature, where there's velocity, and the ordinary nature, let's say, where there's the usual position. And since our particle is quantum, since it is immediately located in an unclear way, in what state? Since its existence is described by a probability function, we can't talk about any precision in such measurements. And we can't take a particle, measure its position, and immediately measure its velocity. Why? Yes, for a very simple reason. If a particle starts to exhibit wave properties, then it has, let's say, a velocity. And it moves according to a pattern that we know then this particle loses its position. And if the position is lost, then we are dealing with a wave. And this symbiosis of a wave and the notion of a particle as a material entity, as an object and essence of classical physics, it shows us that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is not aimed at stating the impossibility of determining two parameters simultaneously, but rather at the fact that it's impossible to say what a particle actually is. At the same time, well, about the fact that it's impossible to say well, what a particle actually is. If it materializes, let's say, from the quantum medium, from the wave function, it becomes a particle. And we define its position. If it doesn't materialize and remains a wave, we define the wave parameters. And basically, this is the true essence of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But the fact is that both parameters cannot be calculated at the same time. And the fact that we try to fit every school problem into every, so to speak, hole, every gap, is not related to the nature uh, and... Um, true essence uh, of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Because Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is understood very superficially, a huge number of jokes pop up. One joke was recently shared in the Project Telegram, and of course there's a link in the description. A huge number of jokes appear. One joke was recently in the Project's Telegram. The link, of course, is in the description. Heisenberg is driving and he's pulled over. They ask him, do you even realize how fast you were going? Heisenberg replies, I don't know how fast I was going, but I definitely know where I am. In general, this is a magnificent description of the essence of the uncertainty principle. And basically, this is one of the bright examples of understanding spark ideas like bypassing Heisenberg's principle. And since on this is the perception, very often other interesting ideas and other interesting thoughts appear. For example, on one of the forums, the guys were discussing how to cheat Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and how to measure both position and velocity at the same time. They started from the idea that since it's impossible to measure speed, yes, that can be, yes, uh, and position. At the same time, you need to have one lab assistant measuring speed and another measuring position. You give them walkie-talkies and make them communicate with some coordinator who records everything. And since one person will be measuring speed while the other measures position, it seems like you could measure both position and speed at the same time, and the experiment would turn out successfully. One person will measure speed while the other measures position, so you can measure both position and speed. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is misunderstood, and both position and speed and the experiment would turn out successfully, and this is yet another demonstration that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is not quite understood as it should be. How is this even possible? It must be, and how this is even laid out. If we look at the behavior of physical processes, it may turn out that during these short times, the process is actually much more interesting. 
Physicists have suggested that if we observe the movement of a particle in attosecond intervals, we can uncover patterns that were previously impossible to identify. If we observe an electron in attosecond intervals, we can discover more states. Then you can uncover patterns that were previously impossible to identify. Uh, for example, as always, there's a lot of talk about electrons, and if you look at an electron in attosecond intervals, you can uncover a few more interesting states. These are states that before you couldn't even really hypothesize about. You can establish some systematics and see certain patterns that you couldn't even really hypothesize about before. You can establish some systematics and see certain patterns. Not long ago, the Nobel Prize was awarded for research directly related to the field of attosecond physics. The research team was able to create, well, let's put it simply, a laser camera that allows you to take pictures of these instantaneous states of the system while studying it, to take pictures of these instantaneous states of the system while studying it, and this way you can look at what the state of a particle is in 20 second intervals, and not just to watch but also to record, take photos, and then study this experimental data. And here's where the rubber meets the road. It was suggested that this attosecond development, attosecond physics, could finally bury it. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle Heisenberg's uncertainty principle was thought to apply. It was suggested the principle fails when measuring position and parameters instantly to some standard intervals that could then be measured. It was suggested that if you look at the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in a 20 second interval, it turns out that the Heisenberg principle will stop working because we will be able to immediately measure the coordinate and we will be able to immediately determine any of the parameters of the particle being studied. It's all a play on words, and in reality we don't have any fundamental difference from a physical standpoint here. So, it turns out that we are simply recording the position of the system at a given moment in time. And first of all, no one has said that there are actually as many intervals as at a second physics find. It turns out that we simply record the position of the system at one moment or another in time. And uh, firstly, no one said that there are actually as many intervals as uh, atomic physics finds the wave function will be defined at some point. Yes, there will be some measurement, and yes, there will be some specific value, but it's far from certain that we're already looking at the smallest quantum. This measurement, or rather a segment made up of even smaller particles, it turns out that attosecond physics is not related to the principles of Heisenberg's uncertainty, because in reality we don't know whether the attosecond is the minimum interval or not. And based on that, the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg continues to hold, because in reality we don't know whether the interval attosecond is the minimum interval or not. And so, based on this, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle continues to hold, and it will keep working in the future.